May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always faithful and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So, most of us probably remember the Wizard of Oz and that refrain of follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 right? Well, today's gospel passage, if we read it in some ways backwards, is our yellow brick road that sets us in the direction. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. I know them, I know my sheep, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. You are known by God. You personally are known by God. I want you to say that to yourself. I am known by God. God is with you. Always. God is not the grumpy old man in the balcony of the Muppets. God did not pull a string on the top of creation and walk away. God is here with us. God is with you. And not just during this sacred hour in this sacred place. God is always with you. When everything is, is going your way and the wind is at your back and you've got accomplishment and achievement and joy, God is with you. When everything is falling apart, when you are going through challenging times, when you wonder, how can I make it another day? What the heck is going on? What is the answer? What am I supposed to do? I feel so powerless. God is with you. Nothing, nothing ever separates you from the love of God, not even death. Not even in that moment will you be separated from God. That truth is our starting place. All of that happens, all of that is true because it is God's nature, not because something you or I do or accomplish or earn or merit or pay for. God's love and knowledge and desire for you is innate in God. That is the place that we wake up from the first moment we take breath and every single day. But that's not the end of the story. <laughs> it's not all of that and then we get to do whatever we want. My sheep hear my voice and follow me. We hear and know this truth about God's love, and in it we also know that God's love is not an end to ourself, but it, is the re it gives reason to our life. It motivates us in what we do. It defines what a good life is. We hear the voice. Actually, we were played this out just a few moments ago. Right before the start of the service, Wendy was saying something to me, and she goes, Canon Allen? <laughs> yes. I, I, I was off in thought, thinking about how I was changing my sermon from 8 o'clock to now. 
and she was talking to me, and, and yes, my ears could sort of take in the noise, but I didn't hear her until I stopped and focused and listened, and then I heard her. God is always telling us about our love and what God desires to do, and, and we, it's all about us. And do we hear? And that hearing sometimes is hearing God's voice like a voice in our head. We hear God's voice in the Word of God. As Episcopalians, we say Scripture is the Word of God not simply because God was involved in its writing and compiling in the beginning of time, but because God continues to speak to us through it to this day. So we can hear God's Word to us individually in this moment in Scripture. And we hear the voice of God in one another and through one another. Again, I was telling Sarah between the services about when I was involved in healing prayer ministry that people would sort of come up to the altar rail during the intercessory prayers and we'd pray for them. And I, I found sort of repeatedly that um, I would be praying with someone and I'd be thinking about what, the, what I, I felt I needed to say. And I'd sort of say that sentence and then I'd, I'd keep on sort of talking while I was trying to think about what was the next thing God wanted me to say to them. But I, I, I wouldn't let there just be silence. I kept on talking and praying. And then I would remember the next wonderful pearl of wisdom I was going to impart in prayer. And I'd share it. And then after the service, they'd frequently come up and say, thank you so much for praying for me. That, that meant so much. And especially when you said this, it was like you were speaking directly to me. And that was not either the pearl in the beginning or the pearl at the end. That was my jazz handing in the middle. I sort of had to get out of my own way so that they could hear the voice of God through me without me getting in the way. We hear the voice in one another, not simply in prayer, but in coffee hour and in Bible study. God speaks through you. That's why it is so important that we're a part of a Christian community. Because if we try and be a Christian in isolation, then, then we lose all ability to tell what's God's voice and our voice being projected onto God. We need one another. We need to listen and hear God in each other because sometimes we need the affirmation, sometimes we need the challenge. Sometimes we just need to be reminded but it's not just about hearing. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. This is not just directed at the apostles and the early disciples who were able to literally physically follow Jesus all about Galilee and Jerusalem. But to follow is to be like, to follow in the footsteps, to live according to the traditions and the ways and the words and the example of Jesus. To follow is to be Christ-like. And, and we aren't doing this to somehow earn the golden ticket to get into heaven. Because remember, the starting place of all of this was God already loves us. God already knows us and, and, and has us in God's hands. And nothing will be snatched out of God's grasp. But we hear and we follow because it's who we are. 
It is our true nature, our true desire. We live in a time of great pain, great anxiety, great brokenness. It happens at a global level as we watch the war in Ukraine, things and news unfolding out of Afghanistan, around the country. We see it in our own country. Violence and poverty, and we know it in our own life and the story of things happening in our life and our family members. And Jesus was a person of healing. Jesus healed folks, and as we again hear in here, my works testify to who I am. Those works included works of healing. And so if we're going to follow Jesus, then the works of Jesus are our works. And again, not simply sort of as a burden or obligation, they're, they're what we're able to do. And we're able to do it when we make ourselves available because the Spirit's working through us. What we need to do is show up. What we need to do is to offer ourselves, offer our words. As I talked about last week, right, that your ministry through Max, your collection of food and other items to bring healing and sustenance to those in need. To the healing prayer class that Sarah's leading right now. To train, to give words and confidence that you can be involved in the ministry of healing just as Jesus did. One of my favorite lines that both inspires me and scares me from the Gospel of John, I think we had it recently, Jesus said, those who believe will do the things that I have done, no, they will do even greater. Jesus healed people and raised Lazarus from the dead. Those were Jesus' works, and if Jesus says we're going to do what he did, in fact, we're going to do greater, that means we're going to heal people and raise them from the dead. The first reading we had today from Acts, Jesus, it was Peter raising Tabitha. Jesus was following Jesus. Peter was following Jesus, doing what he did. Now, here's the thing about healing. We're not the ones doing it. So if your response to the potential of joining that class and being become more active in praying for others is, oh, I can't do that. That's not my gift. I'm, I'm not good enough. You don't have to be. Because the miraculous part is, is it's the spirit at work in us and through us. What we have to be willing to do is to hear the voice of Jesus saying, will you sit with the person in need? Will you listen to the story of pain? Will you allow yourself to be vulnerable to the needs of others? If you do that, in your words, in your being, they will hear my voice. I will work in you and through you. Prayer is an amazing thing. And I will tell you, I don't understand it. 
I can tell you the people I've prayed for and I've never seen healing. I can tell you the people who I've prayed for and been healed, miraculous, unexplainable. And I can tell you the folks I prayed for and what I prayed for wasn't what happened, but I saw healing nonetheless. What I know, though, is that when we pray, God is present. And sometimes, to be with someone in need and just be able to say, God is present, is a healing thing. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me. I give them eternal life. And that will never be snatched. May we not only hear the voice of God in this place during this sacred hour, but when we are in quiet, when we are in need, when we are with family members and strangers, may we listen for the voice of God. And may we have the courage and the confidence to follow. And through our following, God will bring peace and healing to us and the world. For that we give thanks. Amen.